Lord, if you could turn to uh, the book of Acts, and then we're going to look at uh, Acts 11, and we'll just read one, two verses, verses 25 and 26, and I'll be speaking on the subject, the characteristics of a base church, the characteristics of a base church. It says here in verse 25, it says, then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people, and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Let us pray. Father, we come before you. We thank you for this church, God. We ask you to continue to raise up, God, a strong base here in San Diego. God, we thank you for our pastors, Pastor Al and Sister Georgina, and all the leadership, God. We know that you're doing amazing things, God, but it's not going to stop, God, with Father God just this year, but we're going to continue to see the gospel spread, not just in San Diego, but all over the world. So we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, we all say, come on, give somebody a high five. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated today. It's so good to see so many of you. I miss you all. It's good to see Miguel and Sister Esther. Come on, somebody. It's also good to see Pastor Tony and Sister Lorena. God bless you. I love your hair, sister. Come on, somebody. I like your new hairstyle. Amen. God is, God is good. Amen. He gets better and better. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to see Angelo as well, visiting from Albuquerque. Amen. He's the one that uh, ministered to me before I was saved and right there in a brown Econoline van. Amen. It's so good to see so many of our family. Amen. But today I want to speak to you real briefly on the characteristics of a base church. You see, if you study the church of Antioch, it's a biblical model or for, what we, for what we call in this present day a base church. They were a church who strategically fulfilled the Great Commission. And because of that, they were able to shake the world. Now, Victory Outreach San Diego, just like Antioch, this is a base church fulfilling the Great Commission, and we are a church who's shaking the world. Oh, I don't know if you believe it. Come on, somebody. Oh, I'm not just living down the street, but I am in Cape Town, South Africa, and we're taking that country for Jesus. Oh, come on, somebody. You got to get excited about that because we are moving all over the world. And I just want to share some ingredients that enabled them to shake the world. There's five things that I want to share with you that I believe this church needs to continue to do so that we could be the base that God has called us to be. The first thing we see here is that they had a vision for the broken. And see, Victory Outreach will always be a place where the broken people are restored. Don't let that LED wall fool you. Don't let those nice screens out in the lobby fool you. Don't let the cafe fool you. Come on, somebody. But this is a place where, listen, if you feel like your life is in a million pieces, I want to let you know God is in the house. He's in the business of raising up a people who are not a people. You might feel alone today. You might feel discouraged. You might feel that nobody cares about your worries or your problems. Listen, you are in the right place because the same way God touched me and my family, he could touch you. God loves you. <clears throat> he cares about you. He loves you. Listen, it doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter how many failures that has happened in your life. You came to a place where if you are broken, God could repair you. He can polish you up and he could put a calling on your life. Could somebody say amen? amen. See, they had a vision for the broken. Just like Ezekiel and he breathed on dry bones. The same way that Ezekiel breathed the breath of God on those broken bones. Listen, God wants to breathe on you this morning. God wants to breathe on you. You may feel like there's no hope. You may feel like, what, what is there to life? What is life all about? But this morning, I came all the way from Cape Town, South Africa, to breathe on you and to let you know victory outreach San Diego. God has a mighty destiny. It doesn't matter what you're facing, what you're going through. God has a destiny for your life. Come on, slap your neighbor and say, he's talking to you. See, we want to breathe on you. Come on, somebody. We want to breathe on you. Here in this church, it was the breath of God that resurrected our broken family. 
Come on, all we had was a welfare, uh, was, a, was, a, was a welfare food stamp. Come on, somebody. All we had was an EBT card. Come on, our God was on the first and 15th. Come on, somebody. But I thank God that I stand here today as a man of God. Oh, God has kept me. God has preserved me. No longer is my mom sticking a needle in her arm. No longer is my sister in foster care. Why? Because the breath of God breathed on my family. So if you have some pain, if you have some doubt, if you have some discouragement, if you have anxiety, you came to the right place because we're going to... We're going to breathe on you today. The Spirit of God is going to breathe on you. It's going to breathe life into that dead situation. If you came in depressed, my friend, at the end of this service, we're going to pray for you, and we're going to believe God that depression will leave your body. See, God is able to take all your worries, and he's able to make something good. He's able to take all your broken pieces and do something great with your life. The second thing that we see the Antioch church did was they had a vision to raise up leaders who were built for the battle. Oh, you're standing right right here in front of you standing is a man that was built for battle. Come on, somebody. All those days at the life group. I didn't understand what God was doing in that life group. I I was like, man, when can we take a break? How many have ever felt like that before? Bring a two liter. Come on, set up a table. I didn't know that God was busy building me for the battle. I thank God for the family life flow because it's right there that God is training you. God is building you up. God is depositing some good stuff inside of you. And I want to encourage you. You got to get in that flow because you never know where God's going to send you. Imagine what if God sent some of you to Russia, to China. What, is some, what, what, about, what about price breakers? Because somebody go to price breakers and let that jewelry girl know. Let that, let that man right there fixing your broken cell phone know about the love of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? What about the guy at Costco making that hot dog? Can you let him know behind that hairnet and that face mask? You're going to say, listen, man, I want to let you know that God has a plan for you. Come on, somebody. I'm getting hungry. Can you tell? <laughs> But God wants to raise up some leaders who are built for the battle. See, we need battle-tested warriors. We need men and women that you can stand strong, that no matter what the enemy brings, that you will be able to look the enemy in the eye and say, I'm not giving up my life group. I'm not canceling my victory center. I'm not going to stop teaching kids. I'm not going to stop working in the parking lot. I'm not going to stop making ca- a coffee in the cafe. I'm not going to stop because this is my field and this is what God has given me. Is there any battle-tested warriors in the house? You're being built for the journey. See, no matter where you're at as a leader, remember, you have an individual plan. Maybe you're not called to go to South Africa. But how many know you're called to go somewhere? What about tomorrow in that lunchroom when the receptionist is broken? You can just walk by and say, oh, we can't pray at work. Are you going to break those rules? Come on. I'd rather get fired for praying for somebody than stealing boxes. Come on, somebody. I'd rather get fired at work for praying for somebody than stealing something at the job. I'd rather pray for somebody and break the rules but bring some hope. Come on, somebody. We need some battle-tested warriors. What about there at your office with all those attorneys? Come on, somebody. With all those different people, those executives that you work with, do you say, hey, God bless you. Have a great day. We need some battle-tested warriors because somebody say amen. Amen. See, God wants to deploy you there at your job, there at your school, there in your community. Does Does the community know that you're a Christian? Oh, come on. We're not just getting all this training. I dare some of you to start that life flow curriculum on a weeknight. Come on, somebody. Say, I'm giving out classes. Come on, somebody. All that stuff you got inside, God wants to raise you up and deploy you. Could somebody say amen? amen? The third thing they had was they had a vision to be a generous financial support to the missions and the missionary. And listen, this is a generous church. You guys are mighty generous. Look at all that money that you raised. Come on, somebody. But listen, I want to say thank you, because if it wasn't for this generous church, I wouldn't have been able to go to Africa. Do you know you guys pay for my flights? Come on, give the Lord a good hand for that. 
You might have gave a nickel. You might have gave 10,000. You might have gave a dollar. Listen, you are making a global impact. And we can't lose our generous spirit. No matter what is going on around you. Listen, know that you are making a global impact. There is people that are dying. They're waiting for me to get back to meet with me because there's people that are on drugs. There's people that are in gangs that say, I need help. My son, my daughter has stole everything in our house. I don't know what else to do. And I say, oh, you came to the right place because right here at Victory Outreach Cape Town, we have a man and his name is Jesus. And it doesn't matter what devil is afflicting your son, what devil is afflicting your daughter, but in the name of Jesus... Come out of that son. Come out of that daughter. But we couldn't do that without a generous heart. Now I want to encourage you. Listen, if you're not a tither, if you haven't given to God, I want to challenge you as a church. Don't stop giving. Because there was somebody that gave so that I could be reached. So that my mom could go to the women's home for free. Come on, somebody. My mom didn't come. And they said, well, we need, Mrs. Mrs. Allen, we need, uh, you know, $10,000 to admit you into this women's home. No, but she was able to walk it. All she had was, was track marks on her arm. And they said, hey, all I, that's all you need to qualify to get in. And God began to touch her. And God began to raise her up. And God began to put her in a place of honor because of a generous people. See, don't stop giving. There's hurting families in South Africa that are devastated by drugs, devastated by crime. I talked to grandparents and they're, they're raising up their, chi- their grandchildren, eight grandchildren in a small home because all of her adult children are addicted to drugs. Imagine a grandmother that's already raised children, raising little ones, and she's, she's driving this one there and driving this one, and at night they're shooting guns in her community. Come on, somebody. But how many know God is raised up a people called Victory Outreach, that we're not afraid of nothing, that we'll go into the craziest places. Come on, somebody. We are able to go into some of those gang-infested communities and begin to let them know about the love of God. See, because the generous people. See, you know what we need is we need a generation Come on, this generous. I want to talk to the third wave. Listen, third wave, you shout good, you preach good, you got them Yeezys on, you got those skinny jeans, ultra skinny, super microscopic skinny. They're painted on. I hope they're not so skinny so you can't get into your wallet because we need a generation of third waivers that say if the pioneer generation gave all they had, if the Joshua generation gave all they had, then as a third wave, we are going to model to give for God. How many third waivers can say amen? Oh, that was weak. Are the third waivers in the building? Come on, somebody. Then let's be generous. Amen. The fourth thing, and I'm almost done, and we can pray is that they had a global vision for church planting. And see, church, we can never lose a heart for church planting. I don't know about you, but when I came to Victory Outreach, there was, a, there was, there was always something being said over the pulpit is, what city are you praying for? Come on, somebody. Not like, what community are you going to live in? Come on, nowadays, everybody's like, well, I'm going to live in Rolling Hills Ranch because it's nicer and the, and the school system is nice. Well, that's great. Amen. But you know what, man? I was arguing with God. I'm like, man, God, how come I never got a house? Marky got a house. You know, so-and-so got a house. I'm over here in Africa. But you know what God told me? He goes, Sam, Marky got a house, but you got a training center. You got a mansion where you're training soldiers. But we're proud of Marky. Come on, somebody. He's going he's gonna to host me next time I come. His house will be ready. But you know that is that if I would have got a house, I probably would have never left. I pro- I'm serious because I came out of nothing. But I thank God that we're a church planning ministry. We're a church planning ministry that we believe in going into foreign soil. Now, maybe some of you may not go to foreign soil, but you can go there and visit. I want to challenge you to come to our Africa conference December 2nd through the 6th. Come on, somebody. 
and you could come on out and just experience what God is doing. We'll take care of you. We'll make sure you're safe and all that. Don't be all like, oh my God, Pastor Sam's. Come on, somebody. Don't be afraid. Somebody said, don't be scared. They say, if you're scared, go to church. Well, you're here. You're going to get courage and then you're going to go back out there. Amen. See, but we're a church planning ministry. We can't stop preaching in our life groups that one day some of you will take a city. We can't stop preaching in our, in our gang ministries that some of you will take a country. We can't stop, pre- we can't stop uh, preaching, man, that some of you are going to take a continent, that some of you are going to take the world. How many here believe you're going to take the world? I don't know about you, man, but I cannot be stuck in San Diego. Oh, come on. The second I touched down in South Africa, I said, oh, my God, this is my natural habitat. Come on, somebody. We're out there. We're looking for souls. We're ministering. You can't walk by me without hearing about the love of God. Some of you are called to take a city. Some of you are called. What about, man, what about Chula Vista Victory Center? Come on. It's Chula Vista in the house. They're taking their city. But what about other areas? What about Oceanside? Come on, does anybody have a heart for the military? Come on, somebody. We need somebody to take East County. Come on, we need some people to take Claremont. We need some people to take Fashion Valley. Come on, somebody. Oh, come on, somebody. They're hurting over there. We need some people that you have a city on your heart. Listen, we're in Mexico, we're in South Africa, we're in UK, we're in Panama, we're in Australia, we're in New Zealand, we're in Germany, we're in Amsterdam. What about Ohio? Is anybody here down to take a leave of absence and to get into a plane for a couple hours and say, I'll go for a month to begin to work with drug addicts. I'll begin to work with those on the street. We need a generation that says I'm part of a base and in a base people go and people come. People go and people come. Are you ready to get in a plane and to go reach the hurting people for Jesus? You can't stop church planting. Some of us, we need to pray. I pray that the Holy Spirit, as you leave this place, will begin to, if you go eat Chinese food today for lunch, that you say, man, maybe I'm called to go to China. Come on, somebody. If you go to the taco shop and you're eating that carne asada, maybe God wants to send you to Mexico. Come on, somebody. If you're there eating some barbecue, come on, maybe God wants to send you to the deep south. Come on, somebody. If you're there eating some l l Hawaiian, come on, somebody, then all of a sudden maybe somebody will go to Hawaii. How many know We're, we are a church planning ministry? Can somebody say amen? amen? And the last thing as they come to the keyboard, and I'm going to pray for some of you, is that not only did they, have, did they have a global vision for church planning, but they had a vision that could only be accomplished by, the power, by possessing radical faith. See, the church of Antioch, they, they stepped out and did amazing things for God. And tonight, I want to, or this, after, this afternoon, I want to encourage you. Listen, God is looking for somebody to be radical. God is looking for somebody to do the impossible. Look what we just did. Simple people, we just raised. Come on, over $126,000. Come on, give yourselves a hand. Oh, that's God right there. But we're looking for a generation of people that say, man, I know there's more, God. I know there's more, God. I know you could use me tomorrow at work. You could use me at my college. You can use me in my school. You could use me in my high school. See, I love their faith because they stepped out by faith to see something impossible take place. And Victory Outreach San Diego, we must be a church that steps out by faith Don't stop believing for greater things. It's our time to strike. Who's ready for the impossible? I don't know about you, but as I'm there in Africa, man, I don't even want to come back. Why? Because there's such a need. I don't even know how I got here. I didn't have no plane money. I came to the States with $13.66. But how many know God has provided? I said, how many know God has provided? I want to talk to you because God wants you to do the impossible. God wants.
wants you to do the impossible. I don't know what you're facing right now. I don't know what's going on in your life. Maybe some of you are battling depression. Maybe some of you are hearing voices in your mind that say you're no good. Listen, I want to speak to that impossible situation. I want to speak to that negative voice right now. And I want to declare that you will do great things for God. That you're not a disappointment. That you're not a depressed person. But that you are a victorious warrior for God. That you're going to do mighty things. That some of you are going to be pastors. Some of you are going to be missionaries. Some of you are going to be pillars in the house of God. Some of your, your children are going to go to nations. Come on, stand to your feet. We can't stop believing God for great things. And today I just feel in my spirit, listen, if you're facing an impossible situation, is I want to pray for you. If you're sick in body and you need a healing in your body, I want you to come. If maybe you're believing God for your marriage. Maybe your marriage is going through it. Maybe you're a young adult and you've been battling, you've been wrestling, I want to remind you that you are part of a base church and God wants to raise you up to have radical faith, to do amazing things. So as they sing this song and you need prayer in your body, I want you to come all over this place. If you're down and out and you need God to lift you up, I want you to